little less epic. dancing behind the scenes on that intro, but a lot more intimidation, I think. So welcome to I season two. I am both excited and, and terrified. Yeah, I, I, we'll see what David has in store for us. Absolutely. So we're going to do some intro stuff. We're very happy to be back. Thank you to Alita of Legal Bites, Lima, in the right corner there. Rob from Lum, uh, from Law and Lumber as Ghostblade slash Glitterblade Lumber Loss. Very exciting. And of course, the inimitable Ian Runkle of Runkle of the Bailey, Gimlet Otterfiegel, whose accent and voice I won't even try to emulate. <laughs> to everybody, <laughs> see if I can still do it. Two. We're really excited to have you, Chat. Thank you so much for the gifted memberships and all the fun. And I'm going to hand it off to David so that he can take us through the introduction to season two, Echoes of Eternity. What is going on, everybody? Uh, it is nice to see you all here. Welcome back to Lawyers and Dragons. Season two, Echoes of Eternity. It has been a journey to get here, and I am excited to be taking us through this today. So before we get into it, here are some ground rules, both for all of us and for you at home. So firstly, this is fiction completely fiction. This isn't based on real people. These are stories in a fantastical world. Just want to be clear about that. We're playing in a safe environment where all of us have trust with each other for what's going on. That's something I also want to make clear. There's a safe space, safe foundation here as we get into this. Now, there is exclusive merch in development that will be available over on hoaglaw.com. It is hoaglaw.com, correct? Well, that's 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 the law firm website. Um, the store website is in the description. It's a it's a Shopify link, and very soon we'll be able to get that up on the episodes themselves. Very excited about that. We will have new exclusive merch. Uh, you'll see, see and hear more about that as we move along. And for those, I've already seen a lot of people using it. New emojis in the chat Whoa. are available for our memberships. So there are new emo emojis there. I've seen a lot of them. There's a lot of high parties in the chat today. That's awesome. Some other things. Sometimes there will be battle maps. Sometimes when we are engaged in combat, there will be new maps available that you can see uh, adding a visual element. Sometimes there might just be pictures like this. You know, you might, you might make an appearance. How does he get that little uh, armor on? Oh, well, he's in... <laughs> Cats are liquid. I, I, they can do anything. He'll tell you. He's in Ghost Blade cosplay right now. Uh. <laughs> Ghost that's, Blade that's... just found emojis. Like, so Ghost <laughs> Blade's distracted by emojis. Oh, no. <laughs> and well, there are that... some Ghost Blade emojis in there, folks. Stealth is Ghost Blade. Nightwind is in there. Lots of excitement <gasps> here in Season 2. Love it. And just as we're kicking this off, I see there's a lot of people in the chat hit that like button share oh, this out it. there let everybody know that we're back lawyers and dragons is back on saturday mornings at 10 a.m let's get into this game so we open on an open field just outside of hardy town and there is a bunch of people there there is a lot of common folks there a lot of adventurers have gathered and it is here that we see a uh, a stage with kind of a podium at the front and a little cat climbs up on top of the podium to speak to everybody and you see that there's a very large construction with kind of this cloth over it and so the cat steps up and goes and taps on what would be just kind of a makeshift auxiliary microphone analog microphone uh, that just projects his voice out magically. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed citizens of Hardy Town, we gather here today in memory of a dear friend and a valiant ally who has journeyed into the great beyond. Yes, we speak of our beloved squirrel. And so in honor of our dear departed friend, we find it befitting to commemorate her memory and her dedication to the foundation itself of Hardy Town. We have decided that Hardy Town will henceforth carry the legacy of our beloved friend. We shall rename our home Squirrel Town, a tribute to a friend who might have been small in size, but mighty in spirit. We'd now like to reveal the memorial to our... Wait, hey, wait, put the curtain. Put, put, put the curtain, Dennis. 
Dennis, pull the curtain. What did you, what did you do? Uh, Dennis, there are thousands of people watching. With, uh, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. We'd now like to reveal the memorial to our friend. This will forever be in the center of Squirrel Town. Thank you very much, everyone. Cut to Gimlet and Lumber. What does that mean? Who wrote this script? <laughs> 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 and so we cut over to Gimlet, Otter Fiegel, and Lumberloss, who are not at this event in Hardy Town. Uh, gentlemen, you find yourselves walking in the town of Va Eleanor, the city of Va Eleanor, which previously, the last time you were here, there was the first burning of the tree. Got into a little scuffle. There was a little scuffle. There was, uh, you guys were put on trial. You guys were arrested. You, <laughs> there was a uh, certain individual who spat acid at a crowd. <laughs> and so the, the two of you find yourselves here. Uh, just walking in town, possibly with a destination in mind, and I'd like to give it over to you. It is midday, sun is out, and there are people just walking along, doing their normal daily jobs. What do you do? Oh, I, I mean, have Gimlet and I seen each other? Like, do we are we walking together or are we walking just... together? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's I'm, like. Otherwise, I'm I'm going to. <laughs> I'm very confused. Gimlet, did you did you get a bag? Are you dra are you dragging something really heavy behind you? Well, I seem to recall I had the bag of holding. Okay. So probably not dragging anything at this point. <laughs> so I think we've uh, eliminated that uh, that issue. Okay. Um, are you uh so at this point you may not have gone and gotten that bag yet. You might have well, been were, on destination to go get it. There were two bags. So I would still have bag number one. It's bag number two. That's the We need to get another issue. you need to get another bag that goes in the bag. Exactly. Gimlet is very aware of where his valuables are. <laughs> uh what was the name of the inn? Varus is in. Kimlet, have you let me in on your plan to do this? We need to go see Varys. <laughs> no, no, Varys. And no. And it's going well. <laughs> Good start. Oh. And you why guys, you, why I, I'm sure he Varys? misses us. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Why? Why do we need to see Varys? I I may have left something there. I just need to make a quick pip in to pick it up. Okay, so it's not Varys we need to see. <laughs> it's it's stopping by the inn. More or less, yes. You would both arrive at Valis. Valis is in. Thanks, Valis. Chad. <laughs> and as you as you get there, you kind of see that it's uh, he's not there, and there is a bit of like kind of broken glass on the window. But there's no one standing inside. It's as you open the door, just kind of like looks a little disheveled. It doesn't look very clean. There's dust on the floor. What do you do? Gimlet gives a heavy sigh and says, Oh, this doesn't look promising. <laughs> and goes inside. Promising is the door unlocked? What? The door is unlocked. All right, let's go inside. You step inside. It is everything that I described where the tables are just kind of turned askew, the chairs aren't pushed in, and you see that there is a very thick layer of dust on the reception desk. Housekeeping's about the same as it ever was. Uh, <laughs> Let's Did go Valis upstairs. retire? There is no sign oh, of Valis here. We're not going to go there. Well, I mean, fair. Like, it's completely in character for right now. Yeah, Val's totally dead. Let's go upstairs to the room that Gimlet had before. Okay. You go up the stairs. You go to that room. The door is closed. Uh -huh. Did we Gimlet leave it that way? 
uh, you don't hear any response on the other side. The knock echoes through the hallway. It's a very kind of quiet, the floorboards are a little creaky. No one's been here in what feels like some time. Let's Since try Black opening Leaf, the like, door. torch the people. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Business is not booming. The <laughs> the, you put your hand on the door, you turn the doorknob, and the door opens right up. And as we, you see, the room itself is basically overturned. The How bed, overturned? <laughs> the bed is flipped over. The curtains are are torn. The mirror is shattered. But the floorboards are still intact. You're good, Gimlet. Gimlet uh, conjures up a crowbar and heads over to the floorboards. <laughs> Uh, give me a strength check to, to pry the, the floorboard up. Now that would be an advantage, so yes? Small. Yes. <laughs> an advantage. I mean, yes. It, you know, you gotta... So... Alright, so... First roll is not great. Second roll is even not greater. So I've got the roll of six. <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, (laughs) Gimlet, as you step up and try to pry the the floorboard up, it just kind of lets go, and you find yourself tumbling back, and you fall down. Ghostblade, what do you do? You just saw this. I'm watching this and going, you didn't think beforehand? Like, I'm, like, twice your size. I think quite literally, (laughs) physically twice your size. You've got a crowbar. I know that you, you, you keep things close to the chest, but... You could have asked for help. <laughs> Gimlet says, "Ah, so suddenly you're helpful, are you?" <laughs> we, oh, we, we, we learn things. Oh, 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 oh! I just, I do. I have crayons Gimlet's, I can throw at him. I'm mad. <laughs> Gimlet's dabbing on the haters already. Uh, Ghostblade, uh, it is still your go. What do you do? Reach over and try to grab the the crowbar from. Will Will, will Gimlet? Will you give me the crowbar? Can yeah, I, can you'll I let him try with the crowbar. Okay, then I'm going to okay. try and pry the floorboard off. Give me a strength check with advantage. So roll twice, take the better number. Okay. Also, just for the chat today, I'm going to be drinking is, zombie brain we are soda. Not, we are not on a good start, guys. <laughs> we are really not going well. Now you, oh, you there we go. go. Okay, oh. here we go. All right. Uh, Ghostblade steps up, puts the crowbar right into the floorboard, pops it open, and both of you see inside the untouched bag tied up and sealed. And so Kim Little Mage hand that out and, and over. <laughs> oh, so there's a magical hand that reaches over and picks it up. Yep. Why, did, why didn't you use the mage hand to right? open it? This is. I, <laughs> I have not, questions too. Don't it like? It, it doesn't well, work that way. It doesn't work that. The, the four. That's not okay. how you use the force. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know nobody Fair ever enough. uses the force in to like you know do the dishes. They're always. <laughs> or or better, that's not how the force works. Is what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's better spells for that, but they take a while to cast. Kimlet, uh, the mage hand reaches over, picks up this bag, which is now hovering, and then pulls it over and just drops it in front of you. Oh, would drop in front of me, not it. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, there's a very loud jingle jangle as it as it collides with the ground or jingle the floor. Jangle. All right. What do you I'm do? not touching it. The last time I touched that bag of gold, I was I I got in a fight with a, a gremlin, everything, little monster, everything, <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. I got in a fight with That's everything. Happened. You got in a I'm fight with the monster, followed by a fight with the town, followed by. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll put the bag in the bag of holding with the other bag. Okay, <laughs> you give like this bagception. I was gonna give Valis a. A little something, but oh. I don't think he's home. <laughs> Where's Are Vallis? you guys at all concerned about the state of the place? Eh, I mean, I mean, the last time, the last time we were there, a a 
a giant dragon creature literally yeah. spat acid on half the town. So I would have reasons not to return either. And plus, I think one of our friends might have taken the, the innkeeper and thrown him against the, the wall or door and said that he was going to help us whether he liked it or not. As I'm not there, I cannot defend my actions, but they were well-reasoned. <laughs> were they now? And we'll with, say, Let's see if with, we can find Valus. Well, with that, Gimlet, as you get up, as you had fallen, you get up and you put this big bag of jingle jangle away, and you kind of find yourself uh, looking out the window. Give me a perception check. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, you know that's going to go well. Uh, oh, that yeah, could be worse. That's a 13. On a 13, Gimlet, you get up, and just from like the corner of your eye, you think you see something outside walking in the front. And then you look over, and you see somebody that you immediately recognize wearing a kilt and long ginger beard. And you recognize this person instantly as your brother Egan. Ooh. And with no, no, that... Now we can really find out if, if the Feagles really get along. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we jump over to Lima, who, Lima, you find yourself, you had just seen this uh, uh, commemoration and the renaming of, of Squirrel Town. And mm -hmm. it's it's very nice. And now people are all, you know, it's come to an end and people are all going about their ways, going back to work, going back home. But you find yourself, you are already here because there's mm -hmm. a tea garden nearby and you find yourself sitting there studying. Mm -hmm. And she does. What do you do? I, it, it's uh, it's like midday, mid-afternoon, a little overcast, not not too cold. And okay. um, I'd like to know what it is that Lyme is doing on a day like this. Uh, well, she is definitely examining the various... Uh, uh, herbs and other plants for for the tea so that she can always make better and better teas for herself. Um, so she's doing a bit of that, but she uh, <clears throat> she gets up at some point because she after the ceremony, she figures Hardy is probably um, free uh, from his responsibilities, and so she goes to seek him out. Okay. And as you start putting all your gear back together, putting everything back in your bag... Uh, almost distracted, you hear calling from like just a couple of feet away. Hey, you, you, you're new. Uh, I, yes, I, I have not been here for very long. I, I've never seen you before. Who are you? Uh, my, my name is Lima. Who are you? And as you look down, you see just kind of sitting on this on the table nearby is a little mouse wearing a red oh. hat i love it you can't <laughs> do that to lima <laughs> okay so i take it back <laughs> what she says is oh hello <laughs> i'm much more excited to meet this person oh, hi <laughs> i uh my name's pip what's your name my name is lima how are you? <laughs> oh God, it's just joined the group. <laughs> <laughs> I am really good. I was on like an adventure and then I got lost and I got really lost and it was really cold, except I wasn't that cold. And then Hardy showed up and he sent a bunch of people to come to like save me and stuff. And then like, there was like a snowball monster that go, Ooh, I have snowballs. And I'm like, you know, just happy to be back. And then I, I, I kind of did a couple other things. I just don't remember them right now. Wow. I mean, that sounds like quite the adventure. What did you do today? Did every, did, what did I do today? Yeah. Uh, well, mostly, well, I saw I saw the ceremony uh, to to the illustrious squirrel. May she rest in peace. Um, that was a great ceremony. I also have been uh, just studying the, the herbs in the in the garden for tea. Do you like tea? I would like tea, but like I just I don't really drink tea. Like I can't really, because huh. I my my paws are too small to pick up the cup. 
Oh. Hip needs what if you had what if you had a mouse sized cup? Oh that my gosh. I would drink tea like all the time. Like not some more and more and more and more and I it, it smells good. It does. It does, right? It's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. So like I you know, I see a lot of people that like walk around here and they and I recognize a lot of them because I I see them so often. But you're super new. Um Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, I haven't I haven't been around here for very long. Um but I do know Hardy. Uh we're I guess you could say we're kind of friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hardy is number one best friend. Really? Okay, Why do you say now that? Now we don't trust him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm now concerned. I'm thinking, well, I was thinking that that this creature is very, very naive. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an insight check, Lima. Oh, yay! My first thing. Uh, okay, where is insight? <laughs> oh wait. Okay, here. But then, where do I where do I hit the button? Oh, is it now? I'm wisdom, right? Oh yeah, here. Sorry. Uh, it's the plus six. There, uh, yeah. Where it says insight, click on plus six. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I no, you're am right. Middle of the middle right column. Now. The bi uh, oh, big here. middle column. Here's where I oh on the plus. There it is. No, I'm trying to yeah. click it. It's not. It's not clicketing. You got to click um, the plus six. Yeah, I'm trying that too. No, it's uh, it's 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 she's in view mode. She's not in roll mode. Oh, okay. oh no! How do I, I how do I change? I think it's got to log in. Hang on, I will pull it up. Okay. Well, if she rolls, oh, that's 20, right. I have to. You can roll just roll with in. twenty and add six to it. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I. It's not letting me roll anything. I should have. I did not realize that that was a thing earlier. Here, I'm sorry, let's guys. Well, don't, do... don't like log in like on a live stream and just show everyone your login. Oh, of Here. course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try. I just dropped in the chat Ooh. let's just use google dice roller until we get the characters straightened out I got it okay and then so just add will, your number yeah i'll share i'll share my screen then i'll share a new screen ah wait wrong thing sorry Ooh. uh first episode bumps in the road <laughs> it's our We're first time waiting. back it's totally cool yeah <laughs> pip is sitting there <laughs> waiting with anticipation I'm sure he's sitting there very okay. calmly, patiently, not so jumping about in jitters. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an it, it's an eight. I accidentally hit the, okay. the a three before, but the, yeah, it's it's an eight. On, it an on the wrong, eight, wrong time before. As you're looking at this little mouse, trying to figure out, like, okay, he's like super naive. You get the feeling. Wait a second. He's a kid. This is totally a child. Oh my! And that's why he's so naive. Okay. Oh crap! Give her. Uh, what is it? Oh, Ghost no. Blade's gonna get arrested. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what? What? Why did you go there? I'm thinking that a child should not play witness to murdering with like swords and daggers. That and that's that why you're up. gonna get arrested because who's okay. most likely to murder? But likely, well, <laughs> successfully or unsuccessfully? Corruption of the innocent mouse. Either or. <laughs> I mean both, I guess. Me, I, I think me. But Lima, mind you, Lima's the one that like roasts like pig people and eats them. I mean, yeah, but that's different than little like, reasons, baby mice. For non-cannibalism reasons, who's most likely to get the murder? <laughs> Fair. There is one character in this that does have a murder, murder, murder chant. I, I was I was owning I was owning my demons and I yes. I'm oh, concerned that's an pain. excuse known to law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned for Piff. Like there's not child protective services, but is there mouse protective services that are gonna come in at some point in time? Piff's gonna be there's okay. gotta be. Are we not concerned yeah. about a mouse having a best friend that's a cat? I mean that's concerning enough. I mean no, that I was mean, that was my first thought. Pretty much anybody who's got a best friend who's that particular cat doesn't make good life choices. <laughs> that is Which... a fair assessment. <laughs> just, also, oh. I was just owning my demons. Needs to be uh, needs to be assured. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to offer the defense of self actualization. Your yes. honor, in my defense, I was owning my demons. <laughs> 
Owning my demons t-shirt. Okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say murder, murder, murder. I was gonna get a subtitle. <laughs> uh, Lima, yes, yeah, so you look down and you realize that this mouse is but a wee child. Um, and he's just like kind of staring up at you with the anticipation. He's like, So, um, so if you know Hardy, then that means you must be like adventurer. Like, you, you like, you like travel and stuff and you do crazy and fun things, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, crazy is, is a good way to describe it, but uh, sometimes fun, sometimes fun, um, not always. Uh, sometimes it's also cleaning up after other people's adventures, but uh, there's a little bit of that. Um, uh, but yes, to answer your question, it's, yeah, it's, it's never dull. You've done anything fun recently? I mean, I did. I did. I did recently kill a, a beast in in uh, the town of of Tuxen. Pip sits down and wants to hear all about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Lima's kryptonite. <laughs> what 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 kind of beast was it? Uh, it was, it was a very large beast. I, I, I don't really like to get into too many details about it, but it was, it was an adventure. Let's just, let's just say that. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So you're like, I keep all my secrets to myself. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel the need to talk too much about these. I, they're fun, but you know, sometimes they're, they're kind of scary. Oh, that's Four something that Hardy later. says. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy's that? always saying, like, we keep secrets. We don't tell nobody nothing, you know, because then, like, when people know stuff, then they, like, try to hold it over you. It's like a blackmail. I mean, oh. yeah. And I'm the one that we're concerned about Pip being Pip around. Pip has seen some stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, think, I think Pip, I Pip might, be, might be unwittingly in some kind of a smuggling ring. <laughs> I already did say that like Hardy is the worst choice for her. Like, <laughs> uh, with that, uh, he is going to sit there and continue just messing with Lima a little bit. We jump back over to Gimlet and Ghostblade. Now, Gimlet, you just saw outside your brother is walking around in town, where he's probably not supposed to be seen in public. What do you uh, do? Gimlet says uh, to Ghostblade, "Family, let's go. Let's go see how this how this goes." So Gimlet will open the door to the inn. Okay. Uh, at this uh, point, he, as you, you go downstairs and you go to the front door to to go and look out, and uh, you see. That your brother's back is to you, as he is clearly up doing something at uh, like a like a local stand, like a fruit stand, and he's doing like something, something criminal, something like or? like both of you give me a perception check. <laughs> well, it, that's the thing. Like, do I can I recognize that they are brothers? Like, is it that obvious? Yes, and roll perception because they look a little similar, except I got uh, a nine. 15. Okay, Ghostblade, you, you can see that while they look similar, uh, this one looks like this. And here's a... a... Uh-oh. <laughs> this oh, is what he looks like. <laughs> he's He looks a lot less thievish than, than Gimlet. And as you say that, you see that he is very clearly pocketing apples. Oh, <laughs> how to get you? Got very, it. very yeah. clearly pocketing apples and just stuffing them in his pockets and not being seen or caught. Mm -hmm. uh, he Lima, has. I'm going to remind me to give Lima some notes on this when she meets like furry, friendly creatures. <laughs> Ghostblade has a little book. I have a little book. Just like he takes notes in with crayons. Remind Lima, <laughs> don't. Like might be friend shaped does not mean friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And as as Egan turns around, it sees Gimlet and Ghostblade. He goes, "Brother, I've been looking for you." That's uh, an accent off. I love it. I'm so excited. And he like kind of comes running over to you. And Gimlet will sort of step oh, back to back him into the uh, into the inn. Uh, mostly just that we can have a conversation that isn't in public. Do you just like walk backwards and back into the inn? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Well, and he'll beckon in, but yeah. Where are you going? Come on, we'll we'll talk in here. Ah, oh, okay. And and he just follows along inside. Who are you? As he points at Ghostblade. This is Ghostblade. It's it's a long story. What are you doing here? Ghostblade. That name is Ghostblade. I hear Blade. that name in different places. Which ver which variety? The glitter or the ghost? I just want to make I, sure we're in the right story. Uh, apparently, there's a guy called Ghostblade. Walks around, throws glitter on things before he steals them. Well, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be me. I don't know what, what story. We're, there might be another one. With glitter. It's, uh, you're <laughs> saying there's more than one with glitter. Just, another topic. <laughs> You were asked a question by your brother. Like, your brother asked you a question. Sorry, That's I didn't it. mean to make it awkward. But, brother, I've been looking for you. I could use your help. And Gimlet's eyebrow just goes up. <laughs> yeah. I see chat is roasting me for, for my accent, <laughs> and it's funny. <laughs> it's I, just funny. Got back from, I just got back from Scotland, so it's... Uh... It is a very, like, <laughs> DuckTales Scottish accent, and I'm cool I with it. I love it. <laughs> I love this it. This is a good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, brother, I've been looking for you. I could use your help. I've been looking all over. I tried Topaz Bay. You weren't there. What is? What do you need? Okay. So I got in some really deep trouble with the Crimble Snarks. What the heck are Crimble Snarks? Don't ask me. I don't want to know. I we actually were... do want to know. What the heck are Crimble Snarks? It's a... Well, look. It's a rival crime family. Oh. What'd you Say do? <laughs> we were playing Wacky Sphere, and I made a really big bet that I can't really pay off. Uh-huh. <laughs> How big? Like I may have bet most of the house on it. So Ma and Dad not happy. Gimlet says, and you think I'm happy? Well, Ma Figo said to come and find you. Perhaps you could help me out. Uh, I guess we'll have to talk to the Crimble Snarks then. Well, actually, they said either I have to come up with 144,000 gold or <laughs> we go and potentially take Lord Bastion's uh, Silver Nightingale. See, I like the second part of this plan. I don't. Ghostblade, have you never played Wacky Sphere? I'm just it's shaking a, my head at all. It's a game you gamble over. I don't like the gambling part. You've never played Wacky Sphere? And you're not going to convince me to play now. The, do you know what it is? <laughs> don't worry. It's a know. sport. You whack a ball in a gopher hole. Is it golf? <laughs> golf. No. <laughs> it's golf. You do Wackosphere 18 times. It's golf. <laughs> golf. <laughs> golf uses a crooked stick. On Wackosphere, you use a tire iron. Uh, tire iron. <laughs> it's the ghetto version what of golf. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people are interesting. 
<laughs> also, I like how we have tire irons, but we probably don't have tires. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have wheels. <laughs> There's definitely wheels. Just yeah, the chat is on fire. Q Robin Williams for the win. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I love this chat. <laughs> Guys, jokes all the time. <sighs> Look, you go, you play all 18 holes, you drink some boom berry. You ever drinking boom berry? Wow. If it's a beverage consumed on a course where you play Wackosphere, I've probably consumed it. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, very volatile drink. Yep. Some people call it boom berry, some people call it malort. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> then you then you put it you put it in your golf cart afterwards and it starts it up. That's right. That. Well, I mean, it's magical, so sure. <laughs> it's magical. It takes you to a place you don't want to be. <laughs> well, you would now go specifically play. passed out by the dumpster in the alley. <laughs> Substances that take you where where you don't want to be is like glitter blades' next best skill. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is there. You did have some interesting adventure towards the end of last season. <laughs> anyway, what we need to do is either come up with the money or we go to, you know, the Dreadlands and potentially steal the uh, the Silver Nightingale. I love how he starts what, by saying what we need to do. Yeah. Like, like, like your people really, are very Gimlet, How close are you? I, cause last time you, we talked about this Gimlet, you and your family didn't really communicate a whole lot. And I know you're not the sharing type, but why are we doing these things for your brother or even thinking about it? Step one is steal the thing. Step two is figure out what we want to do with it. Why? Does, does the question. question of why come in anywhere? No, we're just there. Okay. <laughs> well, there's plenty of to be gold to be had. Well, with Bastion's uh, got a lot of gold. Probably other valuables, too. <laughs> Gimlet says, I've been thinking of taking that thing for a while. It's right. So... It's really famous in Fiegel lore. Was Lord Bastion, did we meet Lord Bastion before? No. Okay. <laughs> Give me a history okay. check, Rob. <laughs> like you just ask it up into the sky and God says no. <laughs> and and this, you know, <laughs> sometimes the no. question gets answered that way. No, you haven't. <laughs> oh, my history. I, I have a, that I have is history awesome. Nine. Nine. Uh, you've about never heard level right now. of Lord Bashan, and um, that's all you know is that it's the Silver Nightingale that has been talked about. But you don't even know what that is. You knew Nightingale, Bird, Silver, something valuable here that would equate to at least 144,000 gold pieces. Okay. That's so what do you money. think we could do? Your awkward silence is terrifying. <laughs> uh, I'm not the one being asked this question. This is a family decision. This is oh, he's very discussion. much looking at both of you, assuming that the two of you work together. I, I'm I don't have a one. plan yet, but it seems to me step one is steal the thing. Step two, figure out what to do with it. Well, so there are four other steps that we have. Firstly, we need to find the muscle. In any heist, you need a muscle. Muscles hey. usually when the heist goes wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. And he looks up at Ghostblade. And he says, he is clearly not the muscle. You got somebody else with some muscles. I really kind of want to stab your brother right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just unironically. Uh, we seem to have, we have a, we have a, we There's have a, a lot friend. of that goes, that goes around. <laughs> I seem to recall that we have a friend of ours who has a flail who likes to use their flail at all occasions. That sounds like the kind of guy with muscle. So we need that. We need you because I'm you've sure got he's the smarts. Be real thrilled about the idea of stealing something. 
that that's right up his uh that's right in his wheelhouse and then there's you over here you're what it is it that you do again ghostblade uh sneaky very sneaky very good and for better. heist and then just in case we're go oh, i went australian there holy crap that was weird. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, it's that like trying to stay nowhere. on <laughs> and hardy is sneaking out already which is bad <laughs> it just happens stupid cat um and then we're going to need somebody who can do some healing in case we get hurt gee i wonder who you're talking about <laughs> We're already planning for failure, are we? Well, I, I know just the people if failure's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't happen to have known that little black cat, have you? Mm. He's this probably in a bag less... somewhere. <laughs> no, I don't think he would have been in my bag. <laughs> yes, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Because I ran into the cat when I was, I was like, looking for you. Yeah, I ran into him at Topaz Bay. He was turned in tail. Said I might find you here. <laughs> Just the roasting. roasting. Oh, my God. This is like Rob level <laughs> roasting. You guys are great. I love it. Now this is brutal. See what it's like. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to have a talk with the cat about talking, but now you sound oh, you like Shrek. Have, you seem to have done your homework. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh and with that we could we transition over to nobody. Nobody, you find yourself uh let me take down him. You find yourself sitting in the woods, quite a while away from Squirrel Town. You haven't been there in some time. You left shortly after its establishment and shortly after uh, the team kind of disbanded. Dylan went on his own merry way. You kind of released the Dragonhawk. And as you traveled around looking for friends, you found yourself come face to face with a little group of lizard dragon kin. Lizard dragon kin. I know what's coming. And so you've been with them for some time. And um, at first they tried to eat you, but you Ooh. very quickly uh, pulled fruit down from a tree and handed it to them and they were blown away from that because they can't climb trees and so well, ever since then yeah. they've said hey friend so um you is you is friend right oh yes i'm friend definitely okay because we only know coblin oh no i am a friend uh, how long are you going to be staying with us, friend? As long as you'll have me. Because we, we, we like you, you handing us the fruits and stuff, but, you know, you're not Coblin. No, I'm not a Coblin. I don't know what a Coblin is. Oh, I, I, I a Coblin, they Coblin, and, and oh. the Coblin points over to seven other little lizard these little lizard guys is anyone else just staring at this image and listening to david's accent and just immediately just envisioning this actually playing yep. out right now 100 percent. good good 100%. good i'm not alone no no well, <laughs> so you guys are the coblins i'm That's here right. i'm here as long as you need a friend we need a lot of friends uh we, we like friends <laughs> But only when they are you friends, because uh, otherwise we have to eat friends. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I don't think that's a great way to make friends. Do you have a name other than Coblin? I mean, you know what? I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> no, I, my name's Coblin. OK, and what is the other Coblin named? Coblin. 
You're all named Coblin. Yes. Oh, okay. Productive. Well, fantastic. No, I'm, excuse I was me, here. friend. Could could you reach up and grab that glimmer gourd? Glimmer gourd. Mm. That's uh, right. Sure. Yeah, I will grab the glimmer gourd, and then I will present it to you. Oh. And you see Great. that there is this like kind of gourd growing out of a tree that has this like luminescent U to it, which is now visible on screen. Fantastic. <laughs> you pull it well, down. That looks very tasty, Mr. Coblin. Enjoy. It is delicious. And as you hand it to him, uh, within one bite, he just crushes it, and it's just he just now covered in fruit juice. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. You'll also notice that they only have four teeth in total, and it's mostly just giant jaw. <laughs> Hence huh. the lisping. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> well, I am also very at, that, at that rate of consumption. Price. I'm concerned. <laughs> Do you have a home of some kind, Coblin? Coblins travel together, constantly looking to cure our scurvy, but we can't reach the fruits in the trees. You have scurvy. <laughs> well, no more, because I just had glimmer gourd. Okay, so when we get scurvy to the fruit, related to the being scurvy, short. the scurvy is cured. Wonderful. Uh, wait, give me give me a perception <laughs> check on this guy. <laughs> sure. Ooh. Right. See, episode one. <laughs> so, dungeon. What's the number? Well, it's Am not I? out yet. It's I oh, it's, forgot okay. to say. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be a seven plus five for a twelve. 12 on a 12 on a 12 as you're looking at this guy and and you've kind of been with them for a number of weeks but they kind of keep forgetting about you or at least the, each individual one they're very forgetful creatures and so you you find yourself having to almost reintroduce yourself every time you talk to them but as you're looking at this thing up and down you see that it has so a very had large conversation head conversation before Yes, you've definitely had this conversation before, maybe with this one. You know that one of them is like kind of the leader of this little pack of coblins, uh, but they have very large heads. They have four teeth in total and very heavy, stocky bodies. Very small okay. hands. They physically can't climb the trees if, even if they tried because their, <laughs> their bottoms are too heavy. How many coblins can I fit in my bag? They stand. <laughs> they stand Bob. at about three feet tall. Oh, that's bigger than I thought. So yeah, you, they're not. No, they're not super no small. In the bag. Okay. Yeah. So, Coblin, we are traveling up to make camp. Will you help us set up camp? Yes, I will happily join you, friend. And then that's great. And then he turns and just waddles away as fast as he can, which isn't very. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep up with him. We're going to go try to Not make hard with these coblins. <laughs> they all just start <laughs> waddling together ahead to go make camp, which you would remember has already been set because you've been at the same place for the last two yeah. weeks. <laughs> well, Repeating I'm repeating the same conversation. I've set it up. A special version of hell. Sorry. They have very bad long term memory. You know who's not robbing anybody right now? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's I not mean. robbing anybody. Huh. There's, there's uh, something in there. And with that, we're going to jump back over to Lima. Lima, you've been sitting here with Pip for a few minutes, this mm -hmm. little mouse. Mm -hmm. And he's going to look up at you and, and say, do you have any other friends, or is it just you? Uh no, I I have I have a, I have a number of friends. Yeah. Where are they? <laughs> um, well, you we know we, them. we uh... from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Lima just starts crying. Um, <laughs> um, uh, no, they're they're uh, we 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 all kind of went separate ways for a little bit because we we all had things that we had to do. Uh, but we're I'll, I'm sure I'll see them again at some point. Oh, interesting. Do you think maybe we should go find them? Do you know where they are? Did they get lost? Uh, I, I don't know about lost, but I don't. I haven't seen them in in a while. Uh, but I do have a, a question for you. I, how did how do you know um, Hardy? He's been my number one best friend for a long, 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 long time. And and like we go on adventures together, and we like hike around together, and we hang out with other people together, and and like it's just a lot of fun. Ah, okay, okay. What kind? What kind of? What kind of adventures do you have with Hardy? Well, there was this one time where there was this like empty town, and he was like, "I want to take that town." So he sent me there, and I like kind of went in, and I went like in to go and like scout around, and and like then I got lost, and then I had to oh. somebody had to come and find me because I didn't know where to go. Oh, oh my! Who who and came hard, to get you? A bunch of other people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that that's good. That sounds that sounds kind of kind of scary a little bit to get lost like that. And as you're looking at Pip, you're going to notice that there are these like kind of little blue streaks of magic around him. Oh, so he's a he's a magical mouse. He's a talking mouse with a hat. I mean, <laughs> cool hat. It's fair. It's a very cool hat. We don't need to be Lyman. I think that's magical. <laughs> And I love it. You're, uh, give, give me a perception check. All right. And I fixed my cheese. I fixed my account. So perception. <laughs> Burp. It's a oh, it's a ten. Yeah. On a ten, as you're you're That's looking not, at. I him, thought it was a one at first. <laughs> you you start to notice that you can kind of see through him. You mean like 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 literally see through him or like I can <laughs> see that he's BSing me. <laughs> oh no. You could see through like physically see through him. Oh, oh he's back okay. To so, it's so he's, he's, he's maybe, he's maybe like a hologram. Like he's someplace else instead of being right here with me. That is certainly is a jump to a conclusion. <laughs> wow. And apparently Something very accurate. <laughs> 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 David was not expecting me to, <laughs> to get there. Just, just way too accurate. That is certainly a belief <laughs> to be said. What a conclusion on a 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't ask me to roll for wisdom. Uh, well, uh, apparently, I didn't have to. like any game maker, any like dungeon master, like worth nightmare. It's like that was not exact. That was exactly the wrong thing. You <laughs> That's really say. funny. Hey. So she can also see through him by seeing through him as well. Uh, Lima is <laughs> yes. <laughs> like crystal ball. <laughs> you can you can see through him, and he seems okay. to be some kind of like spectral little mouse. Sometimes okay. he's not see so see through, and then sometimes he is. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's reassuring. <laughs> um okay uh i don't know what to do with that information but that's uh noted um are you talking to yourself uh you know sometimes i just say things don't worry about it it's fine uh <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this other adventure that you had with hardy oh i mean like we just like kind of go around and and he's looking to put up stores and businesses everywhere and it's like mm -hmm. really exciting but i don't really understand all that business mumbo jumbo so like he just sends mm -hmm. me in like a little scout to go and scout out locations because he says i can't get hurt oh okay um so do you know where hardy is right now oh uh, probably probably back in his house Okay. You know, takes a you, lot out of him when he's doing speeches, and then he's got to go. And he apparently Hardy has like really bad anxiety, but I'm not supposed to tell anybody. And then oh. he does like all these like speeches and stuff, and then he goes and then hides in his house 
and plots new business ventures. Plots. That's an interesting word. Um, can you take me to Hardy? I sure can. And then he just like hops down off the table and just starts walking. Incredibly slow. Because <laughs> he's <Hint>. little. <laughs> okay. Little pods, slow. Little beats. How could you help him walk faster? Um, well, of course. Uh, you know, Pip, I, I think maybe we'll get there a little bit faster if I if I pick you up. Is that okay? Oh, I mean, okay. And he's going to just stop for a second and just wait to get picked up. And he just puts his hands up. <laughs> <laughs> so she's uh, Lima's, Lima's going to reach down and and pick him up and just kind of like hold her in or hold him in her hands and just be like, okay, tell me where to go. It's really high up here. Uh, would you rather be on my shoulder? I mean, that might be uh, a little bit higher, actually, I, but... Uh, that's fine. I just, I have a really bad fear of height. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, would you rather go in my pocket? Is that better? Oh, no, 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 no. Hardy's always complaining. He gets shoved in a bag, and it's not fun. So, no, 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 no. Put me on... Sh shoulder's better. Shoulder's better. That's shoulder? Sh okay. All right, then. All right. Shoulder it is. All right. Tell me where to go. All right. So it's it's that building over there. You see, like, in between those other two buildings? Like, it's it's uh -huh. that one over there. And he's just going to point ahead and lead okay. you down towards Hardy's. All right. And then uh, Lima's going to go in that direction, wherever wherever he says. At which point. Like chest strap, like, where you, the, the, the moms that wear the kid on the front of the chest just <laughs> strap it A tiny little mouse. Like a little mouse. Like, yeah. Baby Bjorn. <laughs> He, which is it's like 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 the baby carrier, just with a little mouse. So it's a it's a mousy Bjorn. So yeah. <laughs> oh God. At at which point we're going to jump back over to uh, Gimlet and Ghostblade, and as Egan is standing there looking up at the two of you, well, what do you think? You think we can get going? The sooner the better. Give him a little look over to Ghostblade just to see if he's uh, on board. I'm just going to shrug. Sure, let's do it. How do we find our friends? Rather, the people that we call friends that are friends. Well, I recently heard that there is some kind of a magical access point that we might be able to use. Apparently, there's been a great number of adventurers who've been putting these uh, hidden places to get uh, to different locations. This guy knows a lot, man. I'm, I'm appreciating Gimlet's restraint right now. Yeah, Gimlet is like, hmm, that's a, a funny, <laughs> that's a lot of things you know. Interesting turn of phrase. Shameless plug for Hardy's travel agency. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, I'm in at least as far as, as stealing the thing. After that, we can talk. Yep, lead the way. Okay. So he's going to start, he's going to leave and start walking down. And you're going to realize that he's walking down towards where the tree last was. The tree that burned down at the top of the last season. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a good place for us to go. Yep. Yep. Or Gil and I kind of looking at each other going, like, this is a bad idea. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that there's any other uh, any other kind of idea that we get involved in, though. I have a soul stealing a sword or a dagger. They're all bad ideas. But that's true. This sounds like the least bad of the bad so far. So let's uh, let's follow along, see where this takes us. He is going to walk down towards the now very much like barricaded and closed off area where the tree was. There's still wreckage there that's like kind of untouched just ashes along the ground and you can just see where there's like remembering where your footsteps were that you were standing here not too long ago and everything that had happened and you watch as your brother just goes over and ducks under 
ducks right under everything to walk over. What do you do? I guess we follow along. Because, yes. yeah. You see, brother, they put in a little teleportation pad on the other side. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So Residual promising. magic left over. Mm-hmm. Energize. <laughs> we will, uh, I guess we'll go check it out. Yeah, and as you, um, just kind of like walk past, you guys will both walk past the wreckage that's left behind, and you'll see that there is this very small, but kind of kind of etched with gold line on it, just kind of embedded into uh, uh, the stone ground and, and hidden. You have to be looking for it to find this. There's like this little uh, alcove for it. Uh, quite a way. Uh, there's, it's covered in green magic etched into the ground. Hmm. Well, that's not, that's not uh, concerning at all. I guess we go in. <laughs> well, I'll see you on the other side. And he just runs over and as he touches it, disappears, vanishes. Very similar in the way that you had seen other people uh, vanish with a green magical aura surrounds them. It must be pulls green through. trusting today. Well, I mean, he is family, but also, I mean, what else are we going to do? I'm kind of with this. We got to kind of go where life takes us. Well, and also, I mean, there is the opportunity for some thievery here, which is a good thing. What do the two of you do? I guess Follow. onwards and in. Following along. Yeah, man, hey. I'm not there. I can't. I can't talk you out of this. I'm camping Bef with goblins. Before, um... Before Gimlet's brother jumps in there, does, is there a beam me up, Scotty, in the terrible accent? <laughs> beam me up, Scotty! <laughs> oh, God. Nerds yeah. everywhere have just shuddered. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Nerds everywhere have just shuddered. <laughs> David with the soundboard, man. <laughs> I love it. I lo I lo I I'm loving all of the modifications. <laughs> It's like, getting better oh, and better, folks. <laughs> I have graphics now. <laughs> we do. It's so good. So uh, you guys run through and pff, find yourself standing in a different location. There is, and you're all just kind of like standing on top of each other because uh, Egan hasn't moved. He's just popped into the next spot. So when you pop in, it's just on top of him. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sorry. Didn't know I'd have to run away from the thing so fast. And you find you guys are standing in what looks like this uh, really nice building uh, with, with torches lighting it up. And it looks like there is just kind of a chamber built specifically for this with this with kind of the same uh, uh, sigil glyph in the floor as what you had seen back in Keldorus, and you guys know instantly you guys are back in eternity and uh the the place is there's no one else in here but there's like kind of bookshelves lining the walls and some of hardy's collectibles hanging up on the on the walls as well where and, did all of hardy's enemies go didn't he have enemies That's i mean I aside from us eternity I mean, we'd, I'd call, I mean, Hardy's our friendly person. I, <laughs> friend. I have lots of enemies. Oh. As you hear a call from <laughs> the top of the, uh, uh, the next floor up, kind of looking down. I have lots of enemies, but um, there haven't been much trouble lately. That's cryptic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is he wearing like the Hugh Hefner, like the the, <laughs> the robe, yes. just getting there, crossing arms, just oh. sitting there with a, a pipe cigar that's blowing bubbles. <laughs> 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 He's got the bubbles pipe sitting there. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh, <laughs> uh, and, 
<laughs> with that, uh, L- uh, Lima, you hear commotion coming from the building that you and Pip have been walking to. Okay. And uh, you hear some kind of a, a sound on the other side, and Pip says, "That's it. That that's 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 where Hardy probably is. This is this is one of his, I think, houses. He's got like eight houses now." Wow. I don't know. He's got people like building houses for him. Like he calls them safe houses. Oh. Oh. The mooching business was oh. so lucrative. Uh, I mean, it's just crime. A lot <laughs> of crime. <laughs> it's just crime with no extra steps. Hey, Pip, do, can you tell me how how Hardy has has? I mean, it sounds like he's he's been really successful. What what exactly has he been doing in business? Um, Didn't we just cover that crime. <laughs> anytime I ask that, he says, My name is Crime <laughs> because um, crime doesn't pay. Interesting, and because Pip's so, not getting a cut, yeah. <laughs> Uh, on the other side, you hear some uh, very familiar voices on the other side of this door. Oh, what what voices are they? Uh, you would recognize Gimlet's voice and potentially Ghostblade's voice if he's talking, and a very loud or a much louder, unfamiliar voice that resembles Gimlet a little bit. Ah, uh, okay, okay, all right. Uh, well, Pip, uh, are you? Are you good to go inside? Yeah, but I need you to open the door because I'm not strong enough to open the door. Oh, I, I was planning on opening the door. Trust me. Uh, it's very uh, I'm nice just, of I'm you. Just, I'm just checking to make sure that you're you're good to go inside. There's no there's no issue for you. You don't have to go do anything or go anywhere. I mean, I should be good. Need a bathroom break, Lima. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be respectful of this little <laughs> being. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you open the door. Uh, yeah. And as you open the door, you she's see. She's going to use thaumaturgy, by the way. She's she's just she's kind of she's had it she's had a morning, so she's not going to actually touch the door. She's just going to use thaumaturgy to open it. Okay, yeah, all do. of you will hear as the door rumbles open, and you see Lima standing there holding a little mouse. Just not at all terrifying. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this adorable little mouse with a hat on. <laughs> Oh, I see you've met Pip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 yes, I met Pip. Glad you found him. He kind of escapes sometimes. I have to send people to go find him. What do you mean by yeah. escape? Escapes? Well, he just he adventures. He get you know he's very very interested in things. Well, he's got the mind have... of a child. You chose the word escapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why? Why? I'm still concerned about about this word escape. It is uh, very uh, not important now. Anyway, what do you people want? Why are you in my house? Well, I don't know why they're here, but I unfortunately need something. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm all ears. Uh, I really hate to. Act. Do you have any blue cheese? Look, I don't know what kind of trouble you got into, but you probably <laughs> don't want to use blue cheese to solve it. <laughs> it's not trouble. It's just I need it. It's, it's not, not for me. Trouble, it's just Trust murder. me. <laughs> Are you airing out your demons? <laughs> no, I'm just someone else wants it. I need what they have, and the only payment that they will accept is blue cheese. See, I just I'm 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 not I'm not happy about being in this position either. So if we could, there's some this way that entirely I can get blue implausible. cheese. <laughs> yeah, well, no one look. wants the blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you come up to my study here? We have blue cheese here. It's fine. You could just take it. Hardy yeah, is all okay. sorts of creepy today. I appreciate today? that. <laughs> <laughs> you say yeah, this it, like it's recent. It's like show her like where Hardy the blue with cheese like is. the slightest bit of success is like he's gotten <laughs> he's gotten weird. <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's in a town. He's still sitting there 
smoking his bubble pipe. <laughs> uh, all right, L- L- Lima is going for blue cheese. Pip, show her the way. What the rest of you doing here? What is the deal? I'm creeped out by Hardy. I don't know whether to follow or or what. Uh, the the chat is suggesting a very interesting thing that that maybe there's cheese being spread on the windows to clean them. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm confused. Gimlet, Wait. Ghostblade looks confused again. Can you uh, <laughs> tell me what's going on? We found that one. He points to where Lima is uh, wandering. Oh. We probably need to find the other one. What, are we getting the band back together or something? Gimlet sort of gives a kind of shrug. Uh, and uh, you would look over and see your brother is very much like rummaging through the bookshelves, <laughs> looking for <laughs> things. Just <laughs> the kleptomania has set in and now he's got to look and see if there's anything valuable. Gimlet just kind of leans over and smacks him at the back of the head. <laughs> oh, what was that for? Not now. Okay. All right, so we're getting the band back together. Have you seen uh, Mr. Nobody? Not of late. Right. Well, last time he kind of uh, walked off away and uh, haven't really seen him since, but I heard rumor he's hanging out with the Coblins. Now I get to ask, what's a Coblin? Who or what is a Coblin? <laughs> It's a really, like, uh, special type <laughs> of uh, lizard dragon concoction thingy-majiggy uh, that has really, really low intelligence. And uh, apparently nobody's made friends with the goblins. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have no attention spans, so they would forget that they are friends with him really quickly. <laughs> so he's been going through introductions of saying, hi, I'm your friend for the last, like, two weeks. <laughs> Perpetual friends. Nobody's in heaven right now. Are you sure you want to go? Out? <laughs> Nobody's heaven looks like everyone else's version of hell. Just <laughs> <laughs> nobody lost a dragon, so he replaced it with little lizard folk. <laughs> and he gets to make friends with them every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know they tend to eat people that uh approach their camp but uh, apparently if you give them fruit then they become friends how many are they i think there's like you know 12 or 20 maybe 67 of them that's a lot of different numbers <laughs> <laughs> i never really counted too. very much I didn't, I didn't count them. I tried to stay away. They tried to chase me. They say, you look delicious. I'm not delicious, though I do look delicious. <laughs> As he puffs his bubble pipe. Good tough <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, But all right, we got to go get him. All right, Lima, you, you find you what you're looking for. And Lima, you have entered into uh, Hardy's, what looks like Hardy's study. Interestingly enough, there is a very large, what looks like wizard desk sitting there. And the room itself is just covered in books. Okay. It's covered in these books. Huh. Lima's going to be curious about the books. She's curious about the books. So she wants to see what kind of books Hardy is now reading uh, with his like weird little bit of like, like, I have a little bit of sex success. Now I'm like super important kind of vibe that he has right now. <laughs> so very curious about the book. Give the me first book is like Hardy. pop on pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's one oh, fish, God. red fish, yeah. blue fish, two fish. <laughs> it's uh, of mice me, and men. Give me an investigation check. Okay. <clears throat> Hardy reads. Yes, Hardy reads. I am not mature enough for this conversation. <laughs> Hardy, I mean, none of us are mature enough for any conversation, but here oh. we are. <laughs> Hardy's at seventh grade reading level, okay? I resent these comments. Uh, and you got a... Uh, what, what was the... 16. 
So Lima, as yeah. you, you step into this room, you see all of these books. It's, it's just cover. It's a small room with these kind of windows on it. You're upstairs. So you, as you look out the window, you see that you have an overview of look of the town. And there are those mm-hmm. large, like kind of castle windows that would open a little bit. You got to pull them closed. Oh my gosh. Rob has it on his desk. <laughs> that is, that why is on brand. Have, <laughs> why do you have that on your desk right now? Like, was why was that a- ready to hand? Because it's it's a favorite book. It's actually you know what I've got ready his, to hand? Sharp editor. I do too. <laughs> I do too. But this this was a challenge by his editor. He said you couldn't write a, a book with single cell uh, all one syllables, and he did. And he threw in a single multisyllabic word in the book on two occasions. Hmm. It's a great book. Hardy has good company. Hardy has one signed. <laughs> so Lima on a sixteen, you walk, you look around, and you see it's it, it's books that are opened up and papers, and you can see on the desk there are like kind of paw tracks because he's not he's he's there's like ink all over, kind of sp- yeah. it's not super clean, and the books themselves seem ancient. And on a sixteen, as you're going and looking, you're seeing that these books are significantly older than probably anything you would have come in contact with. There are tons and tons of history books, chronology books, uh, talking about wizardry and magic. And on a 16, as you're looking at these, this bookshelf, you just kind of see something glowing from the corner of your eye back at the desk. Do you turn and look at it? Of course. In the desk, You see that there are two drawers. Both of them are locked. And you see that there's a bluish light illuminating out of the top drawer. And Hmm. Pip, Pip, uh, on your shoulder, will point and say, oh, it's it's the bottom one. You the blue cheese in the bottom one. Okay. Uh, Thank you. What's what's in the do you know what's in the top drawer? I don't know, but he tells me never to touch it, never to open it, and definitely don't tell anyone that it's there. Oh. <laughs> well, you didn't have to tell me that it's there because I already saw that it's there, so that, that's that's okay. Do you know how to open it? The top one or the bottom one? I mean, both of them. I, I really, I, I do need the blue cheese, but I'm, I'm very curious about that. that so part. the bottom one is a fake lock. You could just pull it open. Okay, that's good. So it's to scare I'm, away lower intelligence beings in Hardy. The top one's a real lock. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so Lima's gonna open the bottom drawer. She's gonna take out the blue cheese, put it in her bag, and then she's like, okay, but let's let's talk about this this top drawer. What? What's that blue? What's that blue coming from it? I don't know. It's like something super magical. And he says, don't touch it because it is most prized possession. Some of us have lot picking materials in our possession. Yeah. Do you you know how to open this? Because I I know you have tiny little hands. That might be helpful with locks. I can like walk through doors and stuff. I could just like go inside. It's, I've actually never seen it. Can you like put hold me up to it so I can go inside and look at it? Sure. <sighs> oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. So and you hold you hold you put your hand up next to the door. The, yeah. the little drawer. And he yeah. just like walks through it because he's spectral and just passes uh-huh. through the wall. And you hear oh, him no. on the other side. Did I do something terrible? <laughs> That's it. That's all it is. Oh, okay. And then he just comes walking right back out. <laughs> are we just gonna we're just gonna fast forward past the part that the cat just walked through the drawer front? We're just gonna no. pretend that that didn't happen. I think we already knew that that was a, a possibility. <laughs> mouse, uh, Pip, mouse. what what was it? It's a rock that glows blue. Okay. Interesting. How I got next to it, I got all fuzzy. It felt all fuzzy, like staticky. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So it's a special kind of rock, it seems like. It's. I. I mean, maybe it's just like kind of blue. Have you ever seen a rock like that before? 
I've seen it like a long, something like that, like a long, 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 long time ago. Oh, how, Pip, you're pretty young. How how long ago was that? I Ten know. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like, I'm not really so good with counting the time. I don't even know what day it is. Mm, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Wait, and yesterday wait, was world? Tuesday, and tomorrow's Tuesday. Every day's Tuesday. Uh, that's not how calendars work, but uh, okay. But also, yes. <laughs> wait, too Sometimes every day does feel like a Tuesday, don't you think, Chet? <laughs> no, we no, not we need do this. Mondays. This is 10 a.m. I don't know what day or time it is. Like, it's not 10 a.m. anymore. <laughs> Oh, with and, lawyers and dragon thing, it must be Saturday morning, right? <laughs> and with yeah. that, we jump back over to Gimlet and Ghostblade, who are still there with Hardy. And Hardy okay. hasn't gone back to his study at all. He's just kind of he's standing there, just talking with you guys. And okay, so you see, okay, okay, get the group back together. We go, we go pick up nobody. I don't know why. And then what are we doing? It's a long story. Okay, do you want to tell me where it is we're going? Not yet, no. <laughs> what is it, big secret? Little secret. <laughs> and at this point, uh, Gimlet's brother is just going to turn around. He's like, we're going after Lord Bash and Silver Nightingale. <sighs> ah, well, why couldn't you have just said that, Gimlet? Don't we have rapport? You could tell me. Don't you know you could trust Hardy? Rapport? Don't we have to use the word rapport? <laughs> He's been reading a lot of books, guys. <laughs> that was the only one that caught that. <laughs> I have added it to my vernacular. Vernacular? <laughs> Don't we have rapport? <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, so you're going after Silver Knight and Gale, Lord Bashins. Okay, I see you. I see you're making sneaky, sneaky. Why? <laughs> Oh, someone asked sort of a question. Finally. Looks, <laughs> looks over to Egan and says, well, given that you're full of answers, you want to explain? That the... And all he's going to go to open his mouth and go, and Hardy's just going to say, uh, you know what? If it's going to be him explaining, I don't really care. The point <laughs> is, I'm in. Sounds like fun. Let's do it. Okay. Everybody... Um, just kind of uh, hold on to your pockets, okay? And with that, Hardy is just going to, like, kind of hold up his little uh, 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 pipe and just start, like, kind of blowing bubbles at it. And those <laughs> bubbles start coming in your direction and just start pop, 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 pop until um, the two of you vanish Oh, and find yourselves standing in the forest <sighs> miraculously. Magical. Last time I was here, Nigel was here, wasn't he? Miraculously Nigel. implies that it's Nigel. <laughs> Nigel. Ghostblade, it's you. <laughs> Nigel. Uh, you guys find yourself uh, standing in the woods. Lima, you're still back at the other the the the, the, the study there. Mm -hmm. And the two of you will hear Hardy just say, okay, I think he's this way. I, Gimlet, I left your brother back there because he sounds like he's going to uh, make a mess. I don't really want to have conflict with the goblins. I think oh, that's no. probably for the best. <laughs> Wait, you're bringing us to all of the friends that you said were in numbers of like 10, 20, 67. Look, 67, 82. Okay, I don't count very good. It's like one, two, asparagus. You know, it's, it's you just go, keep going. <laughs> can, we, can we find Nigel, like that throw now. Nigel in that direction in case they get hungry? You keep talking about this Nigel fella, but I don't know if I really know a Nigel. Is that, do you have an imaginary friend, Ghostblade, that we don't know about? Several. Yes, several. <laughs> You both answered far too quickly, and that makes me very concerned. <laughs> anyway, let us uh, let us go find uh, nobody. And um, cutting back to nobody, nobody. You are sitting uh, around the campfire, and and like it's it's kind of the sun is going to be going down soon, so they're getting their little fire ready, and they have 
Coblins sleep underground. So you just look around and see there are a bunch of these big holes that they're all just going to climb into for the night. And you have set up your kind of makeshift tent nearby and you're all sitting there and they are what looks like put on a, on a spit and roasting is other fruits that you have picked down for them. And they are just kind of uh, having fun, making lots of noise and singing songs and nobody give me a, a perception check as you're kind of sitting here uh, to the side watching. Okay. Is that a... I just see a dice that's like, oh. That is amazing that it like... Well, fix, fix that <laughs> nobody's dice of, offers. Uh, perception. If I rolled for you, you got a 19. So nobody on a 19. You're 19 <clears throat> as you're sitting lovely, there. Lovely, but I will take my 23. Of a 23, which is even better because nobody, you're sitting there and, and it's really one of the first times in a very long time, especially after all the trauma that's happened a couple of months back, you feel at peace. Like this is a place where you fit in. And we're going to come rescue him from it. And you very much <laughs> begin to hear footsteps and commotion coming from around the trees. What do you do? You hear you you hear humanoid speaking, so you know for a fact it's not some monster or creature. You hear speaking in words. I get on guard and I tell the coblins, "Get behind me!" What is it? Something's coming. What is it? Should should we get ready to attack? Should we get into attack formation? Oh, is that what is your attack <laughs> formation? We run around frantically. <laughs> yes, run around frantically, but behind me. Goblins, <laughs> attack formation! And they just start running around wildly. Uh, Gimlet and Ghostblade and Hardy, you all start to hear very loud uh, kind of screeching and hollering coming from down a path. You also start to see flat, like, flickering lights coming from down this path. What do you, the two of you do? I guess let's go investigate. I need, I'm going to like at least grab a dagger and have it out and ready. Ghostblade, which dagger do you have at the ready? Soul Stealer <laughs> 3000. It's the Soul Stealer Soul 3000. One? Yeah. Okay. The one that, just to reiterate, is now glowing Thank. kind of red, reddish you. Oh, and that's right. Seems to be super jacked up. The last time you used it, the blade itself, which was broken before, is entirely reformed. And whereas it would have been a dagger previously, is it is it? now a sword. And so, yes, you have oh that at the ready. And as you start to move ahead, you hear it. Coblins attack formation. You know what? I'll cast Mage Armor at this point. <laughs> Nobody give me a perception check. Sure. And I'd like to know what your tactics are. So I'm facing the noises. I'm standing up in guard position with my flail at the ready. And I've got the coblins running around crazily behind me. Yes. And my number is 21 on perception. Nobody, as you look down the path ahead, you could just see the glow of that red gem as Ghostblade draws his blade. And you recognize it, and you can also see, because it's a little bit darker there, but you see the yellow eyes of a cat sitting in the trees. Hardy! Friend! Oh, crap. Hello, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> hey. Hardy, come, come to me, buddy. We're having such uh, fun at this campsite. I think I listen, listen, I, I I bet you're having a blast, okay? I'm going to stay up in the trees. These guys are so great, buddy. Yeah, they look like it. Hey Coblins, it's friends. Friends! friends. And as you as you say friends, they all 
line up together, ready and actually in attack formation. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Coblins, march! And they start marching down the, the path. <laughs> Oh no. Now, Coblins, remember, don't eat them. They're friends. Friends! And then all of their teeth pop out. <laughs> uh huh. Hardy, who are you with in the woods? Why it, is it's, that your question? It's Gimlet and Ghostblade. We can kind of use your help. Okay. Coblins, these are my friends. Don't eat them. Don't eat friends. Don't eat friends. Don't eat friends raw. Don't eat friends at all. And they will Cook help you get friends fruit. first. If oh, no. you don't eat them, they'll help you get fruit. Wait, what? Yeah. They, they do what? They will help you get fruits. You help us get fruits? Maybe not Gimlet as much. He's small. But Ghostblade, definitely. <laughs> Gimlet, you see like marching at you are these like lizard dragon folk that are about the same height as you. They look kind of big in place. What does Gimlet do? Uh, well, did Gimlet get his mage armor cast? Yes. Um, Gimlet waits <laughs> to see what they do and um, valiantly takes a step behind Ghostblade. Hey, Gimlet, can you hear me? <laughs> Gimlet, Gimlet, can you hear me? Gimlet. Can I Go hear ahead. him? You could definitely hear him, yeah. Yeah, you guys are like on the same path now, just like uh, maybe sixty feet away from each other. Gimlet, they love fruits in the trees. Use your magic hand to go get some fruits. <sighs> are there any fruits in the trees? <laughs> there are definitely fruits in the trees. And as you look around, and you don't even have to roll for this, you see that the tree that Hardy is on has the most fruits. Oh no! Oh, no. Some fruit out of it. <laughs> oh no! What do you do? I'll make hand some fruit out of that tree. Um, Are you pulling them think... down one by one or trying to rattle the tree? Let's just shake the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Hardy. <laughs> yes. Clawed on. Nobody and uh, 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 the Coblins will watch as a... Uh, Kim, would you describe your mage hand? What does your mage hand look like? I've never actually thought of that. Is it a hand? Um, yeah. Or I mean, is it... It's... He's a strong hand. He's a strong hand. Take my good He's hand. A strong hand. He's a strong hand. Take See, my that's, hand. That's just extra creepy. <laughs> Especially when you know what it's from. <laughs> uh, if it, so Gimlet's mage hand will fly over very softly. Nobody, you're seeing this? The coblins all stop in awe as, as they see the mage hand fly over and begin rattling the tree. Oh no, what is happening? I am being shaken again. <laughs> and Hardy kind of gets flung, meow, as you hear <laughs> Hardy gets fly out of the tree. You try to catch Hardy? Yeah, I'll, I'll do an interception check if you need. But I, I'm Interception to athletics check. Oh, okay. I don't think there is an interception role. <laughs> okay, so that's an to be though. So that's a nat 20 plus two. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. nobody runs over and catches Hardy like a football, and he's all and like frazzled now. <laughs> <laughs> Into the bag. <laughs> hey there, little friend. <laughs> oh, I feel like we're back to where we were a couple of months ago. I am... Concerned. Okay, you want to call off your, your your goblins here so they don't eat your friends? I mean, my friends. I mean, we're all fr friends is the key word. We are all friends, Hardy. Yes. Okay, hey, yes. Do, you, do you you speak goblins. their language, right? Coblins, assemble at the campsite. We are going to welcome our friends. We are welcoming friends, and they... <laughs> They yeah. they like stop and run back and you watch as all of the coblins sit around the campfire and put on some kind of a bib and have sticks as eating utensils. Oh, this is just a terrible idea. <laughs> we are welcoming welcoming them without eating them, don't forget. We don't eat friends. Raw. We eat friends. Raw. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Always cook friends first. We're not gonna eat these friends at all. And if we don't, you'll get tons of fruit. 
fish or friends. Not food. Not, not food. Um, <laughs> that is something I could kind of get behind. Uh, uh, my, uh, they, the friends, give fruit. The friends give fruit. But if you they're fruit the friends, friends. They can't give you fruit because they are eaten. Right. Okay. And they just sit there at the ready, waiting, to, <laughs> waiting for direction. Um, Hardy is going to look up at nobody and say, okay, listen, I know you're like, um, you've made house and home here, and that is some tent. There's a very nice tent you've got there. Uh, so is that the cashmere sheet? Uh, honestly, the, the tent is for me, Hardy. The bag is for you. You remember how this works. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Please, please. please. I'd rather be down no. on the ground with the goblins. Put me down. <laughs> the bag is lovely. I've had it re-sewn. It's fantastic in there. You'll love it. Please don't put me in the bag. Hardy had so much control over life in our absence. <laughs> he had so much control. Instantly. And then within an hour and a half, Hardy is back in a bag. <laughs> Hardy, now, if you don't like the bag, I'm not going to put you in the bag. I don't very much appreciate the that. Bag. Remember, we don't put people in bags that don't want to be if they're our friends. Whatever you say, buddy. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can uh, look with the goblins. Where? I prefer not to do that either. But uh, we have we have quests we're going on, and um, these guys say that uh, we need we need your help. Fantastic. I will say a noble quest. I very oh, noble, oh, oh, complete no. nobility, hundred percent nobility. <laughs> um, I I will I will let you know you are number one first choice, okay? Trinity not available. Nate the Great was busy, so you are number one, number one choice. I mean I think it's clear that I'm more useful than Nate the Great. <laughs> and again big... whatever you say, buddy. I am hundred percent with you, ready to go. All right, Hardy, why don't you get up on my shoulder? Gimlet, Ghostblade, what is our noble quest? I, I mean, we're we're gonna go steal something. <laughs> <laughs> is it evil? Is it being used for evil? No, it is not evil. It is little Tweety Bird that makes songs that uh, do magical things. We're gonna steal a magic Tweety Bird. It's kind of like a Tweety Bird. I, I, um, I'm not even sure that's... if it's magic. To be honest. That's right. Yeah, he he doesn't. Why know. would we steal it, Gimlet? Because it's there and it's valuable. Okay, but Hardy said that this was a noble quest. It that is very said, noble. He said we're not able. Like we were not able. Like it, you misheard him. Deception check. <laughs> Go play deception. Dang it! <laughs> and nobody, if you want to roll a pose insight, you can. Okay. Thirteen. The thirteen deceive. And then my insight is going to be a 19. Oh, Ooh. no. Huh. Okay, you definitely know that he's full of crap. But let me interject <laughs> and just say it is for a noble cause. It has to do. Gimlet is too modest, doesn't want to say. His family apparently Gimlet needs, is modest. <laughs> needs some help. So we are going to do our best to help him. And I am definitely going to take as much gold as I can from Lord Bashan. He doesn't need it anymore. Who Ghost is Lord Blades. Bashan? Uh, Lord Bashan. He is a wizard recluse. Is he I, evil? I assume he's evil, yes. He is like <laughs> super duper. Haven't heard from him in like thousands of years. Kind of gone dark. Disconnected from like, you know, society. And there's just like legends come out from his keep about these like magical birds. Okay, so Lord Bashan is evil. That's and right. He and he's keeping magical birds in prison. Work and with me, Hardy. Is that what's happening? You're, you're going to go <laughs> rescue them, yes. Okay. Well, Gimlet, why didn't you say so? We can get involved in this. We'll go have more magical bird friends to add to the Coblin army. Bird friends, delicious. No, no, we don't eat friends, Coblins. We've talked about this. Mm -mm -mm. Bird friends with salt and pepper. Delicious. No, we don't eat the friends. Well, we're going to work on this, Coblins. <laughs> Can't we leave them here? 
It's a goblin army. Why would we leave them? Because they want to eat everyone. Yeah, also, that's, that's because as stealth goes, these guys are kind of the opposite. At this point, um, as you guys are like kind of huddled up, nobody, you're going to feel a, a very um, gentle kind of tug on your on your pants from where a coblin is now standing. Sure. Well, hello, Ex- little coblin. Excuse me, friend. And as you look down at this one, you realize this one's the leader of the coblins. Friend. I mean, I like I'm the leader of the coblins, but that's fine. Sure. This is the one that remembers you most, but that doesn't mean much. Listen, friend. Mm-hmm. It seems that these other people need your assistance. Mm-hmm. You should go with them. We have to go free magical birds from an evil wizard tyrant. You do that. And I want you to know that you have been promoted. Promoted to what? You are no longer friend. You give coblins fruit. And so therefore, you are one of the coblins. Oh. Well, Great. thank you. You are now an honorary it's coblin. It's a cult. Your name is now Coblin. <laughs> Do we hear this? You definitely hear this. Hundred <laughs> percent. And if you look over, Hardy is rolling his eyes. <laughs> is there a Kool Aid? Is there like a thing of Kool Aid like in the background somewhere? Like <laughs> there well, is. All right. There's just a, a bunch of giant holes. Gimlet, Ghostblade, are we ready? Is this is this all that we need to go and rescue those magical birds? You're not going to resolve the whole you are Coblin thing before we go? I, I am a Coblin. He's standing the there just like waiting for him and he's turned and he's looking at you guys now. <laughs> my resolution is that I accept the promotion and I am a Coblin. I think that comes with like a hole in the ground that they're going to ask you to stay in. Okay, Coblin, I am going to go and cook some more fruit. All right. Enjoy your fruit. I will return, friend. Goodbye, Coblin. And he waddles away. <laughs> okay, Coblin. So, <laughs> so Gimlet, where are we going? And he sort of uh, looks over to Egan's. Uh, I guess you're leading the way. Egan's not here. Oh, Egan, yeah, Egan, Egan is rummaging through Egan, those shelves. Egan was intentionally left behind because we were Hardy didn't want to bring him along because he's really loud and obnoxious. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, <laughs> so I guess Gimlet would give directions, assuming he knows them. Well, no, 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 no. We got nobody. We got to go back now. All right, everybody, hang on. It's time for more bubbles. And he's not even going to blow them. He's just going to like start shaking the the pipe. And nobody. <laughs> now you'll now you'll see as these very large bubbles start coming out of Hardy's pipe that he didn't have before, and. Pff, you all find yourselves back uh, standing in that. Well, nobody is your first time there, but the two of you find yourselves back in that kind of keep that Hardy's got. And as you look around, you'll see that Egan is now holding a pile of junk. <laughs> he has collected an absolute happened? pile of junk. Guys. Oh, you're back. We got hit by a cat bubble. Where are we? This is my home. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I thought that was Egan that was saying that. <laughs> What's Egan's the difference? Like, the voices in. are meshing now. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I just I just imagined Egan like claiming Hardy's home as his, and in, in the ten minutes that they've been gone, <laughs> oh, on see, brand. I imagined, I imagined that Egan would we come back, and even Egan would have that cocktail that I put in the private chat, the the Malort Martini with the uh, the Windex cheese stuffed yes. olives. Yeah. In which case, he would just be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you just come back and there's like this corpse. It's like, all oh, right, Hardy. Well, why are we back here if it, this is your home? Oh, well, we had to come and get Lima, who's uh, we transitioned to. Lima, you Lima's are still here? up at the, uh, you were still in that study and you're still dealing with mm-hmm. this little glowing blue rock. And I, I'd like to know what it is you're doing. You do hear the commotion now coming from downstairs. I like how Lima's immediate thing when left alone is also do crime. It is <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just investigating, not not taking anything. Just just invest. I'm, I'm very curious about 
how Hardy has accumulated all of these things in the short time that we've all been gone. He was a Are you saying that you're not recently. going to be doing crime? What's that? Are you saying you're not going to be doing crime? No, I'm, I'm going to ask Hardy about uh, about all of this. You're going to get a straight answer? If Lime no. is here, I'm going to try to bound up the stairs. Nobody, uh, you bound up the stairs. Lima, you hear a boom, 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 as somebody is charging up the stairs. What do you do? Uh, I turn. I, no, not somebody. I... Nobody is charging up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I look at Pip and I say, Pip, uh, get on my shoulder real quick. If you need something to hold on to, hold on to my hair. Um, okay. And then, and then, and then she just, <laughs> she like, she, she, just kind of like stands apprehensively like waiting to see if she needs to like attack this person and just waits okay lima you you stand there at the ready holding defensive and uh mm -hmm. nobody charges into the room and you lima. see lima anywhere. yes he runs in to give a hug <laughs> uh she doesn't really have much time to react so she just accepts the hug and then like kind of like very quickly starts to piece together like oh i know this person and yes this is not not a threat I mean, it's a giant red dragon looking thing yeah um <laughs> so lima i have to admit gimlet and ghostblade met with me out in the forest and i was a little concerned that they were snowing me and that the quest that they asked me to go on wasn't as noble as they had proclaimed but if you're involved i know that this is a good cause that we can get involved in together uh, I don't know. Crime. I don't know anything <laughs> about about a, a a new quest that they're on. I just briefly saw them. I've been up here uh, for oh. for another matter. Oh, so well, then my what, concerns return. <laughs> is snowing? What is afraid? it that they want to do? They want to free a magical bird from the tower of an evil wizard king. Well, okay. that's one interpretation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, you know what? It's an interpretation I'm entirely willing to let him go with. Yes. <laughs> we'll just that, let him accept that as reality. That we, sounds like so much fun. Uh, sure, but uh, nobody... Are we sure about two things? Is this freeing the birds? And yes. also, is this wizard <laughs> evil? Also, is this wizard dangerous? I would imagine that if they're involved, it is dangerous. But yes... We have reason to believe that it's evil and that they are trapping magical Tweety birds, according to Hardy. Hmm. And I was promised about by this all three of them that it was a noble quest. Are you sure noble was the right word that he was using? Yes, I asked specifically if it was a noble quest and was assured that it is. I don't know. Something about this doesn't add up. If we can't so trust Lima wants friends, to wait, can we trust? Can we do it? Can we can we do it? It sounds like a lot of fun. I I really I want to go. I really want to go. Um Well, who is talking? Oh, uh nobody. This is Pip. Pip, this is nobody. Are you he looks like a somebody. <laughs> he All is right. a somebody. Yes, nobody but his name is down. nobody. He's definitely nobody. waving. Nobody holds his hand out for Pip. More like Are his pinky finger. Need to he just pokes your hand <laughs> like a fist bump, but he doesn't know the difference. Lima, you have a tiny <laughs> talking mouse with a hat on your shoulder. Do you know this? I yes, I I am aware. We we met we met out in the tea garden. <laughs> you met he a talking apparently mouse works in the tea garden. He apparently works with with Hardy. Oh. I still don't quite know what he does with Hardy. We're piecing that together. Okay. He is number one best friend ever. Mm. They seem very close, Lima. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, this is great. We can go on another adventure. We can free the magical birds. And we can enjoy each other's company again. I mean, I'm all for more adventures, but I'm I I need I feel like I need to hear more about this adventure. Let's do it while we're on our way. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't Kinglet, know. So ghost play. Come on up. Oh, okay, I was gonna say Lima was gonna go downstairs, but that's fine. 
Uh, Gimlet and Ghostblade, at, at, at this point, you now hear the commotion going up there. You've just been called. And as you're looking down here, you could see that Egan is now very kind of quietly, like he got caught putting all of his stuff back where he found it and knocking things <laughs> over. And Hardy goes over and jumps on top of one of the bookshelves there and very much like just kind of pulls out this piece of paper. And um, it's a, it seems like you guys see that it's this kind of scroll thing, and he's having trouble pulling it out. It says, Gimlet, come help me get this thing out. Uh, I don't like that, but let's go over. Uh, and Gimlet, as you walk over, it's this, it's this kind of scroll bound up, and you pull it out. And do you unravel it? Sure, why not? So you see inside that scroll is a picture this picture uh -oh. to be exact and you recognize this instantly you don't even have to roll yes. a check for it what do you do Gimlet what is that it's the bird that looks like a box Gimlet Gimlet looks at it you see the bird on it, yes? <laughs> I do I do see the bird, but I was told that it was a Tweety bird. That looks like a sculpture of a bird. You'll notice I didn't say anything like that. What? Isn't that what Tweety birds look like? It's a music box. Um, oh, I don't think okay. that that bird needs to be freed. That's an object. No, no, it definitely needs to be freed. It's being held against its will. It has thoughts and feelings like everybody else. Uh -huh. It's a bird box. You could call it a bird box, but for copyright reasons, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we're going to get. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're stealing a music box? You're stealing? No, 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 no. Um, you know, stealing back. Stealing back. Whose box is it? Well, that I don't Soon know. Soon to be ours. <laughs> Lima, I'm a little concerned that this is not the noble quest I was promised. I told you things were not adding up. We needed some more information. I should have. There'll listened. be noble opportunities as we go. <laughs> no Wait, problem. friends. Hold on a second. We don't have to steal it. We could just replace it. Which would also sure be stealing it. it. And then and replacing it is still stealing the original. Egan object. pulls out from his pocket the most dingy looking wooden <laughs> bird box. And the bird on the top keeps falling off. <laughs> he put, keeps putting it back. Here's what we'll do. We'll go and take the silver one. And we'll put this on there instead. Oh, that's gonna that'll equal totally value? work. Oh, they're definitely worth equal value. Definitely getting some Indiana Jones vibes here. I you don't know, know who that is. The idol with a with a bag of sand. I think we could successfully fool somebody who was blind, drunk, and asleep. <laughs> well, then we better make sure Lord Bastion's all three. All right. Okay. I, I don't think I All can of you have very, play. very awkward silence. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm just going to say, here's the plan. All right. Nobody. Yes. We're going to liberate the, uh, the, the captured bird. Okay. Ghost blade. Lots of riches. Okay. Lots of riches. And we need your help doing, uh, Lord help us. Sneaky things. We need you to help with the sneaky things. Okay. Lima. Take care of Pip. Uh, Gimlet, you are, you are commander in chief here. All right. You all have fun. I am not going. I'm going to say, all right. You guys want this, this, this other, this other Gimlet number two to go? Hardy, if, if no, we're going, you're we're going, buddy. Oh, uh, no, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, you know what? You don't know, forget it. Okay. All right. Bye bye. And he's just going to start swinging his pipe around and bubbles start to form all around you. Oh, all right. But no. I try to grab the cat first. Quick, stuff him in a bag. <sighs> I'm going to try to grab Hardy. He's got oh, a perfect pocket ready for him. David's me, trying so hard. Give, 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 give me a sleight of hand <laughs> check. Just ruined all watch it, plans. Watch it. Watch all it. Watch it. Be in that 20. 
Uh, my sleight of hand is not great. Uh, I hate this game. <laughs> uh, my sleight of hand check is a six. And the buffering just hurts. For, oh, okay, God. that's a six. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, nobody. You reach out to grab him, and he goes, "No," and just leans backwards, <laughs> and the bubble pops. <laughs> and you all find yourselves having disappeared from there and reappearing in front of this. Oh, that oh. looks uh, that looks reassuring. I'm sure and that's that nice place is where we are going to end today's episode of Lawyers and Dragons. Oh, no. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. a nice person with uh, so many uh, with nice things going on. Lord Bashan looks like he bashing in some heads. Yes, thank you so much, everybody. And thank you so much for all the gifted memberships. I know I can't grab those as we go along, but I really appreciate that. And thank you, everybody, for being here for Season 2, including, of course... Our game master, David, and his many voices, all of which speak to him every day in his head. And <laughs> Lita, Ian, and Rob, the lawyers of Lawyers and Dragons, who are having a good time, and it's good to get back into the swing of things. So, everybody, thank oh, you yeah. so much for being here on a Saturday morning. Thank you, David. Thank you, chat. And we will see you on the next episode of Lawyers and Dragons next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. So, look out for it. It's going to be awesome.